we as black people we do not have we do not have the energy to educate anybody right now so you claim malcolm x you read his book but in your own personal life how do you apply what it is that you learn through his book in your own life i just want to know like here you are spinning the narrative to still paint black people as bad as evil as thugs when we're literally being killed on the streets by police for twenty dollars do better do absolutely so much better please do I guess I'll start. I'll start by sharing how I've been feeling and um, how I've been processing everything. Uh, but basically, I found out the news. Was it Tuesday? I can't. I can't even really remember when it, when I found out. But I just remember just like I think how I found out was because somebody posted on somebody on my feed. I can't remember who it was because I tried to avoid it as much as possible. But somebody posted the video of George Floyd and the officer um, and it wasn't like censored because I think like usually Instagram censors things that are sensitive or contain any acts of violence uh, but this person's story wasn't censored and so I didn't watch I didn't see everything but I saw at least like five seconds of it and that was enough for me to click off um, and then so I started watching other people's stories and as I was watching other people's stories, I noticed that like, you know, people were sharing, um, people were sharing the news about George Floyd being murdered by an officer in um, Minnesota. And so I started kind of like, you know, doing my Instagram research, looking for the post, looking for information and everything like that. Um, and I think initially, like what I felt was just, uh, I guess like disbelief but then also like anger at the same time because I couldn't understand why somebody was sharing the video on my feed and I really thought I was conscientious about the people that I was following on Instagram so um it was upsetting to see that and of course maybe that person removed the story or by the time I had gotten back around after watching all people's stories it was gone um but yeah so then I started, I think, just trying to share as much information as I could with people that are on my Instagram and just like making sure that they know what has gone on, that there's been another murder of a black life when literally not that many weeks ago, um, we were talking about Breonna Taylor in Louisville and how she had been murdered in her house. And in Ramadan, we also were made aware of Ahmaud Aubrey's murder and so it just felt like at first I think I was just in in shock um, and it wasn't till recently after talking to some friends and just doing a lot of like self work that I realized that um, I think what I was experiencing was was grief and maybe I wasn't aware that it was grief at the time um, but I went through shock went through disbelief anger um, numbness there was just a lot of emotions feelings that's been going on these past couple of days um and i think like one thing that i've been trying to do and alhamdulillah allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with a friend group that allows me to do this is that i've been just trying to talk about how i've been processing my feelings so we've had zoom calls we've had phone calls we've had facetimes separately in groups where we're talking about our emotions our feelings what we're thinking um and one really prevalent conversation that came up and that keeps coming up is um just this whole thing of people are unable to recognize or acknowledge that black lives matter till they see a black life killed like you have to watch a black person lose their life in order for you to understand that our lives matter and that that to me is just it's a lot of things but it, it doesn't make sense yeah and so um i remember very early on after everybody was made aware about the murder of george floyd there were a lot of people on my timeline that were saying don't share the video don't share the video don't share the video and i was really glad i was seeing a lot of that because 
I think people, it's really weird that people have this like cognitive dissonance when it comes to black lives. Like there's this strange, like we're not treated like human and nobody expects us to be treated like human and everybody kind of like, like how is it, when is it ever okay to watch somebody else be killed? Never, but because it's a black body, then it's okay. It's okay to share it. It's for shock factor, I guess. Like, I really, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I, one conversation um, two of my friends and I were having was, we were talking about how, is it only possible for you as a non-black person to be outraged when you see another, per when you see a black person killed? Is that the only time that you have outrage? Is that the only time that you were angry or you were upset is when you watch another human being murdered. That's the only time that you're capable of experiencing or feeling outraged, right? But we were talking about how as black people, we feel outraged when we hear somebody say, well, I can't marry you because you know my parents and you're black. Or we feel outraged when my dad is on the phone with a white woman and she suddenly can't understand what he's saying because of his accent. Like, we feel outrage at the small things that um, are the microaggressions. We feel outrage, but for you, it has to be a, a macroaggression. It has to be to the point where somebody loses their life for you to feel outrage. And I think that's troubling. That's unsettling. That's sickening. Are you, and, and especially when it comes from the Muslim community, because like you claim to be Muslim, you claim to be under the banner of Islam yet you lack that much empathy and that much humanity that you have to watch somebody else be killed in order for you to feel anything. So there was that, so there was that anger at the fact that people were only feeling outraged after watching somebody be killed. There was anger at the fact that I saw a lot of performative activism that I'm frankly sick of and I've had to mute a lot of people on my story and will most likely be unfollowing a bunch of people because I'm just not for that performance. Like, I'm not gonna applaud you for sharing that Black Lives Matter. Congratulations. I'm glad you finally recognized it and now you feel the need to share it online. And I don't, anyway, so I have just been trying my best to like process all these emotions. And even as I'm speaking, I'm feeling these emotions again. They're feeling fresh, they're feeling new, um, because I'm talking about it, right? So I, I for a couple of days couldn't really sleep really well. And you know, when we go out, we have to wear a mask. We have to cover our face for our safety because coronavirus. Um, but even though I didn't watch the video, I saw a lot of posts and it was just pictures of George Floyd and it was quotes of his last words. And just reading that, that in itself has caused me so much trauma because when I sit and I think to myself, like somebody was asking or telling you that they cannot breathe and you just continued to put your knee on their neck even though they're telling you that they cannot breathe. And so even while I'm wearing a mask and I'm outside, I have to mentally tell myself to breathe. Like it's, I feel suffocated. And then I'm remembering like, there was someone who was literally being suffocated to death. And that the only reason is because they are black. And so like, that has been really difficult for me. And I know like, especially since a lot of meditation exercises kind of tell you to breathe, like, I don't know how to explain it. It's such a triggering word to me now. And I'm trying really hard to like, dissociate the two things or try to find a middle ground or something like that but anyway so that was a feeling um there's also been this feeling of guilt for maybe being the same as a daisy and arab and non-black people that i'm criticizing on my social media page because i'm over here saying y'all need to start at home y'all need to talk to y'all family da -da -da -da. meanwhile i'm living in a house where i hear anti-black speech all the time black people love to kill each other black people are so violent black people hate africans this that, and the third and sometimes i say nothing because i'm tired and so there's this guilt that i feel that i'm adding to the problem because i'm not addressing the problem when i see it or when i hear it 
in my own household. Um, so just trying to work through that and just, I don't know, like I've been praying as much as I can, making dua as much as I can, asking Allah to protect black people everywhere because no one else will protect us. Um, I've been talking to friends. I've had multiple phone calls in the past like two, three days with different friends and we talk about different aspects of this issue of the murder of George Floyd, but the murder of black lives in general and the Black Lives Matter movement and everything like that. Um, so I know I started my coping kit thing a little late because I've already felt those very intense feelings before preparing everything that I need to prepare for those intense feelings. But Alhamdulillah, it was a learning process and I've learned that I need the help of other people to get through this, that I need to check in with myself more often, that I need to take breaks from social media because it literally just boils my blood and it upsets me <laughs> so much to just see so many people, like I said, performative activism or posting things that just don't make sense it's not adding to the discussion it's not adding anything to anything i don't know why you posted it i really don't know why you posted it and i really wish you had thought twice before doing that on your story on your page whatever it is but alhamdulillah like i'm learning to take a break from social media when i feel stressed out or when i feel overwhelmed um and in case you guys are wondering i'm holding this bunny and that's what i'm looking down at just because i need something to hold on to and i think the reason why and i want to i want to address the performative activism thing now and the reason why i'm saying it's performative activism is because the same people who are posting so much um about all this stuff are the same people who i haven't heard a peep from in terms of like checking in on me which i'm not saying flood my please don't do it don't dm me if you haven't dm me in the past don't do it now um alhamdulillah i have friends who are aware who are non-black and who are aware and who are conscientious and who aren't performative they're not being performative about their activism friends who have reached out to me without being provoked it's not like i po posted anything um that made them feel like they needed to check in on me they just checked in just to check in my old boss, who I used to babysit for her and her kids, messaged me and was just like, hey, just wanted to let you know if you need anything, if you want to talk, I'm here. And that just meant a lot to me. So um, I know that there's people out there, non-Black people, who genuinely care and who want to make sure we Black people are okay and who are with us, um, even if we're not physically together or even if they're not out there protesting or whatever it is whatever it may be but then there's this other side that i just feel like it just it feels hypocritical because you're the same i'm seeing the same people who in real life you told me that you can't marry a black person because of how your community would view you or how your parents would view you and yet you're here talking about black lives matter they don't matter in your everyday life and maybe i guess people could argue you could argue like you know people change People become different, people evolve, but my question to you is, are you having conversations with your family about race? Are you talking with your family about the news and not just the news, but are you talking to them as well about what you told me years ago about how you can't marry a black person? Are you talking to them about that at home? Because that means more than just you sharing a post or sharing how shocked and appalled and enraged or whatever it is that you are. Like, are you doing the work outside of just the eye of the media is my question. But that's a question to myself too. Cause like I said, I live in a house where I hear anti-black speech a lot. Um, so it's also necessary for me to put my money where my mouth is and to talk and to also hold people in my own life accountable for the things that they say and the things that they do. But yeah, that's kind of how I've been feeling and it's a lot it's it's just it's been a lot but i'm like i said i'm trying my best to just work through everything my anger has not subsided and i was telling my friend the other day that like i feel like my anger has 
boil to the point where I feel like I'm going to misdirect my anger. I'm going to put my anger in the wrong place because I don't know where else to put it. But anger comes from a place of hurt. It comes from a place of disappointment and all that kind of stuff. So I've been trying really hard to not misdirect my anger because even just the other day, my dad came home and he was just like, um, he was just like, oh, did you see what, what was on the news? And this was Friday. And I was just like, yeah, I saw what was on the news. He was like, that's horrible. And I was like, what was horrible? The protesting or the fact that a black man lost his life. And my dad kind of looked at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> but I was so ready to fight, so ready to defend, so ready to like argue about it. But he was just like, no, it's horrible that they killed somebody. Like, it's horrible that he was telling them that he couldn't breathe and they still continued to do what he was doing. Like, you know what I mean? So I do see that like my anger is sometimes being misdirected because I don't know who to direct my anger towards. I don't know where to put it, but I've been trying really hard, like I said, to just take my time in processing this. And um, one thing I was talking to one of my friends about today, I was telling her how like today, 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 this morning, I recognize that like, okay, maybe I am going through grief. That's what I'm feeling um, because as some of you may know, some of you may not know, I lost my mom like four years ago. Um, may Allah have mercy on her soul, I mean. And it's been four years, but I'm still going through the stages of grief. I'm still going through grief every now and then. Like, you know what I mean? I'm still, ha I still have days where I just, I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing. I just have to lay down all day and just watch a drama or something you know what i mean and that that's been four years it's been four years since i lost my mom and i'm still dealing with that grief so imagine as black people having to experience grief every couple of weeks every couple of months you're having to grieve the loss of another black life like that's a lot that's a lot to have to deal with before you can even process having lost somebody you lose somebody else yeah it, it it that's what it is it's grief it's grief because we're we're losing another life and i think i see a lot of hashtags that say like say her name say his name and i think that's really important because even last night i did that i made sure to say the names of all the black lives matter victims all the victims of police brutality all the victims of the racist country that we live in and it hit me really hard because I was just like, subhanAllah, like, that could have been me. And even if it wasn't me, like, how many, how many people do we have to lose for the world to recognize that our lives matter? Like, how many people have to die for no reason at all? It's just sickening. It's just sickening and tiring. One thing, one thing I would suggest for anybody who is a black person watching this, if you haven't done this already, is to have a phone call with your friends. Have a Zoom call with your friends. Um, like, check in on them. Ask them how they're feeling, what they've been feeling, how they're processing, and everything like that. But yeah, check in with them because I will say the thing that's been most helpful to me has been having those conversations with those friends, calling them and having them validate the fact that I'm angry or validate the fact that I'm tired or that I'm sad or that I don't know what to do with myself. It helps to have somebody validate your feelings. So I would just say like talk to somebody. If you don't have anybody who is a black person like yourself who's a close friend of yours, Reach out to somebody maybe on social media that you're comfortable with. Someone that maybe you've DM'd every now and then and have those conversations because I think it's important to let it out. I think it's important to say your piece and everything like that. It's de It definitely, definitely, definitely helps to talk to somebody about it. Like, we can't just bottle all this up inside and we can't just continue to allow our brains, our minds, our bodies to just go like into trauma traumatic experiences over and over and over without addressing them or seeking help you know what i mean and i know being quarantined it's not easy to like meet up and sit down and talk but there's zoom uh facetime has group calls but yeah i think talking about it is definitely important and i know personally i'm i'm a journaler like i'm a writer 
if I don't write things out, I feel very bogged down um, just because I'm if I'm not writing it out, I'm holding it in. So I have like a diary as well as a journal that I've been trying to keep um, track of. Honestly, even if you're posting a lot of stuff, um, personally me, I don't know what other black people are doing. I, I've muted the majority of all the non-black people on my timeline because I don't have time. Like, and it's not, it's not even that like I'm upset that you're posting things directed to non uh, to other non-black people about race and racism it's not that i'm upset about it like you have every right to do that and i think that you're the best person to do that because we as black people are tired we're tired of explaining things to non-black people we're tired of being your educators we're tired of answering your questions you should do it for yourselves so i'm really glad that that's happening um just know that like i don't know just know that you might be muted like it's not that big of a deal maybe we'll unmute you in a couple weeks or something like that but um, I don't think it'll overwhelm black people because we were, I think, I'm, 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 let me not speak for everybody. Me personally, I'm conscientious of what it is that I'm consuming. And if I see that something is triggering me or it's making me upset or it's bringing up a lot of bad feelings, I'll just mute you. I might not unfollow you, but I'll just mute you because I understand your intent and I know what it is that you're trying to do. But I just don't have the energy, nor do I have the time right now in this moment to deal with that. So mainly the main stories that pop up on my feed now are other black muslims or other black people's stories or like artists or um i don't know like language learning things because i also need to see positivity on my feed food uh but i think it's it, it's a good thing that you're posting information on your social media feed to educate non-black people because um we as black people we do not have we do not have the energy to educate anybody right now. Like I, per I personally do not have the energy. Don't come in my inbox asking me questions. I don't have the energy. And it's not even out of being rude, but it's just like I'm, I'm literally in the process of trying to heal. So the last thing I need to do is help you figure out how you can be not racist. I know personally, I'm just gonna, sp I coming from an MSA that was so very racist and I didn't recognize it till after I left the MSA. I'm very triggered by Daisy people, even if they didn't say or do anything to me. Like I'm very weary of Daisy people, unless you prove yourself not to be worthy of being weary of. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm just very weary. I'm very cautious, conscious, cautious, cautious, English. I'm very cautious because I've had so many incidences of me taking the words of a Daisy person to be gold or to be um the truth and then later coming to find out no you were just very racist you were extremely racist and somehow you convinced me that you were right regarding religion or regarding certain things because even what i was saying earlier i was saying that i've been seeing a lot of things that's been like angering me it has a lot to do with like muslims having this idea that like oh protesting shouldn't be the response everybody should be peaceful this violence is not going to change anything and if i hear anybody say that i'm fighting i'm fighting you we really have to check our check our biases check our anti-blackness at the door we don't have time we really, we really nobody has time nobody has time even and if anybody is in this group and you're mad dm me after but i'm in this uh group chat and they're discussing reading or rereading the autobiography of malcolm x awesome wonderful great i'm actually really happy but i also wonder aside from reading the autobiography of malcolm x what other work do you do to educate yourself and to develop yourself and grow yourself as a person what other work so you claim malcolm x may allah have mercy on his soul i mean you read his book perfect awesome wonderful but in your own personal life, how do you apply what it is that you learn through his book in your own life? I just want to know if anybody is reading it or rereading it and you're not a black person and you want to answer that. I would love to know. Alhamdulillah, like now I'm at a place where I think I'm a lot more secure in myself. And so I need not get the approval of other people to talk about the things that matter to me, whether it's even my own family is against what it is that I'm talking about. Um, it's my closest friends, people I respect. Like, if it matters to me, I'm gonna talk about it. Cause I think there was a time where I started like questioning, like, am I just sensitive? Am I too sensitive? Like, do I take things too seriously? Or like, what's going on? Why is it that I'm 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 always the one who's t like 
looked at so annoyingly when I bring up race in the Muslim community or whatever it is like am I seeing am I reading into things too much is it too is it not that deep but no it's deep it really is deep um and the thing about Islam is that it doesn't stand for injustice anywhere from anybody so can't nobody convince me now that I can't talk about the things that I'm passionate about because it literally impacts the lives of everybody it impacts the lives of everybody or you do realize that like the media is only going to show you black people destructing things and not white people or planted officers doing things you do realize that right so i made sure to, sh to send him the resource <laughs> the resource was a video complied by um i want to call her an influencer I'm, I'm not too familiar with her i just started following her like today but she posted a video a compilation of videos where she was showing how um the media is portraying it so that even peaceful protests are turned to look as if they are um they are riots that there are thugs out there ruining america <laughs> and so i sent him the video and i told him share this instead mind you i don't follow this guy i don't know him from adam and eve um and i i also made sure to watch his story because i also wanted to know what else was he posting related to this to the killing of George Floyd. Absolutely jack diddly squat, y'all. He posted absolutely jack diddly squat, okay? Nothing relevant, nothing informative. Everything was trash, okay? So I messaged him this and I was just like, okay, let me go off Instagram. When I come back, he's gonna redeem himself. He's gonna delete this post and he's gonna post something better because if he genuinely does care, he's gonna do better. But did he do better? No, he didn't. And that's what we mean by performative activism. Like here you are spinning the narrative to still paint black people as bad as evil as thugs when we're literally being killed on the streets by police for twenty dollars do better do absolutely so much better please do <sighs> earlier today i worked on two or three playlists one of them isn't that great because i try to put together like a uh, like acapella songs for anybody who doesn't listen to instrument instrumental music um but it was kind of hard to like Get that all together i don't know if i got lazy or what it was but if you want the other two playlists one of them is called songs i love sung by black women and then the second one is just songs you can dance or sing along with dance to or sing along with i might have titled it differently but if you would like it please dm me after this live and inshallah i can send it to you i made it unlisted just because you know i don't want any criticism i don't <laughs> But um, and if you have suggestions for either of those playlists after I send it to you, inshallah, please do give me those suggestions. I just put songs that I personally like um, and songs that usually bring me joy or uplift my spirit a little bit or just songs that just sound nice. Like that just make me happy to listen to. Um, and oh, and also yesterday I didn't show you guys this, so I'm going to show you guys really quickly. I didn't prepare it 110 percent, but. I got photos. This is a bag of photos. And I have an album and inshallah I'm going to include this in my coping kit. Like photos of my family and family friends. But yeah, I'm going to put together pictures that just bring me joy and I'm going to put it in part as part of my coping kit. And other things that I got, I got index cards and I was thinking to do like um like to write on them like list of self-care things that I could do because sometimes when I'm struggling a lot I forget to do basic self-care like drink water or take a shower or <laughs> or sleep eat so inshallah I'll probably be writing that on these cards um I know I said I was gonna mention like mental health um because May was mental health awareness month and I don't think just because May is ending doesn't mean that we can't focus on mental health awareness um and i think probably like my closest friends know this but not everybody knows this but i used to go to therapy while i was at my college um just because like i said i lost my mom four years ago may allah have mercy on her soul i mean so going to therapy was extremely helpful in like my processing of my grief and just like healing from other past traumas and other pains and it was just helpful it was extremely helpful and i think a lot of times we think that like we only need therapy when we're in a crisis but I think it's really helpful because it gives you tools to deal with things later down the line. Um, and I was actually inspired to go to therapy because of a friend of mine. 
um he started going to therapy and it inspired me to start going and alhamdulillah like my college had free therapy as long as you were a student so i think i went for like a whole semester or maybe two semesters like summer and spring semester or summer and fall semester and my therapist was absolutely amazing um she was a black woman and she was christian but she also had a lot of knowledge about muslim the muslim faith and islam and stuff like that so it made it really easy to talk to her so i think if ever you are looking for a therapist finding a therapist that like you feel comfortable with and that you feel like understands where you're coming from like they might not necessarily have to be the same race or ethnicity as you are but i think it helps a lot um to break that barrier um but she helped me do she helped me through a lot of things and she also helped to give me a lot of like um advice and tips and tricks that i've been carrying on with me till now um i know for example like she had explained grief and the stages of grief to me she had explained that and i'll draw the diagram that she drew for me but she was saying if this is your life and the first time you experience grief this is grief and this is your life let me show you guys so that's how it is at first grief seems to like take over your life and it's not that your grief reduces necessarily but it's that your life just gets bigger so the outer circle gets bigger and so the grief kind of feels smaller when you have more experiences when you have more relationships built and things like that it feels smaller but every now and then then there may be things that happen that make you dip back into that pool of grief um i think for me personally things like the killing of george floyd brianna taylor um ahmaud aubrey all of those things kind of triggered me going back into my pool of grief and my life kind of almost becoming this all-encompassing sadness and grief and numbness and inability to move kind of thing so i've been trying really hard to just like utilize all of the things that i've learned from therapy um when i did used to go and i think inshallah when i have the means when i have the money and when i have the time i probably will be returning to therapy just because it was a very helpful um thing and i think a lot of times in the muslim community as well as in the black community we don't really promote mental health um and mental wellness as much as we should so i would say like everybody should have a therapist and maybe that's my psychology major self coming out but i think everybody should have a therapist everybody should at least go to go to therapy at least once in their lifetime regularly for a little period of time because we all have traumas and we all have pain and things that hurt us that we could heal from and we could always do um like work internally and i think it helps to have a therapist because um of course talking to your friends is therapeutic and helpful and talking to your family members if you're close to your family members is helpful but i think having an outside person who isn't going to give you a biased opinion um is really helpful as well so that's what i would have to say in regards to like mental health awareness again like i said earlier that i will be trying my best to share as many resources as i can related to mental health and healing from trauma specifically for black people um but just for anybody in general uh but yeah so i think it's really important for us to talk about our mental health and to share things like i i try to make sure to share as much as possible that i used to go to therapy because i think it's important to normalize those things in our communities it's important to normalize getting professional help even if you're not having a crisis or anything like that so and I would just highly recommend like if ever you have time just like reading articles or watching videos related to psych or related to the mind because I feel like we we kind of focus so much attention on the body we focus so much attention on health and wellness like going to the doctors and making sure you get your checkups and dental checks and all that kind of stuff and that's all very important but I think it's also equally important to put that much importance and that much weight on our minds and how our minds are because they're also very our minds are very sensitive things just like we want to protect our physical bodies we should also want to protect our minds and protect our hearts and everything like that so instagram is telling me i have a minute and 52 51 50 seconds to go but i really appreciate everybody who joined everybody who commented everybody who just watched anyone who waved sent the heart-eyed emojis i really appreciate you 
thank you for joining i really hope this was beneficial if you have any questions um comments please feel free to dm me i'm not a mean person i'm very nice um but yeah thank you guys so much for joining assalamu alaikum sending you guys lots of love and prayers stay safe peace and love <laughs> okay bye assalamu alaikum Thank mm -hmm. you.